Hi everyone, it's Andrea and welcome back to Andrea's Attic. I'm here today with uh, another colouring chat. So just for disclaimer, while I'm getting everything ready, this is an adult channel. The videos on this channel are made for adults. We discuss adult topics and they're in no way, shape or form made for or intended for children. So now we've done that, let's crack on. We are still colouring in Cassandra from Gothic Fairies Colour in the Heaven. I know I'm using the Colour in the Heavens a lot at the moment. Um, I love these magazines. And these books, they're fantastic. Next one we'll be covering will be one of the Jade Summer Grade Scales, either Fairies or Unicorn. I haven't decided which one yet. I will be doing both of them, seeing as I was requested to do both. And then we'll be doing something from Magical Delight, so that'll be back to pencils. So let's crack on. So we were colouring in with um, the Arteza Everblend markers. So we were using Hazelnut Brown and Burgundy. I think. It looks like it. So got a cup of tea here so just excuse me for a second so all we've got left to do is her hair flowers and decorations on her arms and then just put a little bit of sparkle on her her wings so let's crack on so I just want to say hello everybody how are you today are you all well I hope so I'm well here We're all, we're all well, which is the main thing. Jennifer's fine, she's great. She's just fun and she loves having us both home. The only problem is we're working, so unfortunately she gets to watch TV most of the day while we're working because there's nobody to watch and we've both got to work. I mean, I only work morning, so it's not too bad. It could be worse. So I don't know how things you are where you are, but it's not brilliant over here in the UK at the moment. We now have the highest death toll in Europe with over 30,000 deaths, apparently. And there's probably more than that. So who knows? They're talking about starting to lift the restrictions next week, um, just because the... They're saying the peak is over, but uh, to be honest, I'm frankly worried that there will be a second wave at some point. Um, like I said before, my company have been brilliant and they've said we don't have to go back to the office until at least, at least July. So that may change and they may extend it. Although if people want to go back, they will try and accommodate those who wish to return to an office space environment but uh, if they can if we can work from home they're gonna let us do it for the foreseeable which is it's it's nice it's relaxing I got more money to spare not that I'm and I am saving some of it but I've got to be honest those colouring books just keep falling in my Amazon cart so I was watching um, John the Bibber Flower Colourist who is doing a colour along this month I can't think of who it was with um, he did mention it and I've forgotten um, and it's called Halfway to Halloween so I've already started a picture in the Jade Summer book uh, Cute Witches um, and the hashtag for that if you wanted to join in is um, Halfway to Hall Halloween colouring I think that's it or something like that if you go to the Bimbafile Colourists uh, page you'll see it on there um, so I've pulled all my Halloween books out And I'm going to try and do a, pa a couple of pages. I'm not going to go mad because I find that if if you do go too mad, sometimes you end up hating doing them at the proper time of the year when, you know, you don't want to do any more. So. Same with Christmas in July. I'm sure there'll be Christmas in July again this year. And I'm sure I'll be... taking part in it but I'm not going to go completely mad and colour 10 billion pictures but I might do four or something like that same with the Halloween one also gives me a chance to use up some of the books I haven't yet used um, to colour off and you know it's good fun oh, I'm just having a lovely cup of tea 
So I'm still watching Doctor Who. Huh? I'm getting really confused with these pens. Because I had two different pens. I'm just going to stop the camera a minute while I look for the pen I was using. I'm having a bit of a mare, I am. So I'd remember what pens I'd use. I put the wrong caps on each one and I forgot I'd done that. So now I've been using the wrong pen. But it doesn't matter. I can still manage. And I've now... <laughs> I was thinking, I was looking at it earlier thinking, I've got two of the same colour here. I've got two brandy roses. But I hadn't. I just put them all in the same, same way up. That was really weird. Because I'd put the caps on the wrong pen, so I'd remember. I'm a bit of a dullard sometimes, so anyway. Doctor Who. Yes, I'm still watching Doctor Who um, every now and again. I've, well, I've watched it the last couple of nights. And I am now up to Peter Capaldi's first episode, so... I've gone through the 50th anniversary, watched that last night, and that was kind of, that one, oh, I love that episode, it makes me cry. Actually, every time he regenerates, I cry. Um, I think it's because you get so involved with the person playing the Doctor, in most cases, that it's upsetting and hard when they do regenerate. Same as with them um, when Peter Davison regenerated into Colin Baker. I actually stopped watching it because I didn't like Colin Baker. Um, but I now appreciate those episodes more than I did then. I still don't particularly like his Doctor, but I do appreciate some of the storylines. And, I mean, I, I, I didn't like David Tennant when he first started, and then I loved him. He became my favourite of the new Who, him and Eccleston. And I didn't like it when um, he left and Matt Smith took over. But I still carried on watching it because I wanted to see what this young chap would be like. And yeah, I loved Matt Smith. And in fact, when he carried the Olympic flame from Cardiff Bay, well, he took it from the Bay to the Senneth, which isn't very far. Um, he left at like six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning and Paul at that time was living in a, a flat in Cardiff and we got up at stupid o'clock in the morning, drove down to the bay, parked up and joined all the people waiting for Matt Smith. I think it's the craziest thing me and Paul have actually ever done together. Um, and we, we waited for Matt Smith and watched him uh, come out, posed. I took loads of photographs and we watched him carry the flame. It was, it was you know, it was 2012, so it was, it was really good. So he's just left and I'm on to Peter Capaldi now. He only did two seasons, I think. Or something like that, anyway. Um, I liked Peter Capaldi. It was nice to have an older actor as the Doctor. I know a lot of people said, oh, but he's old. How are we supposed to relate to him? It's like, well, the Doctor was old when it started. It's just, the Doctor could be any age or any gender, any colour. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Um, I don't think Jodie Whittaker's had the best stories, to be honest. I think some of the writings let her down. And using words like fam, I mean, oh, it's grating. What are you trying to do? Just make it cooler for the younger generations. You know what? It's not working. It grates. Um... But I don't think she's a bad actor. I don't think she's a bad doctor. I just think the stories have let her down. And I know there's been a lot, a lot of hate over the Timeless Child storyline and Chibnall destroying canon. And the thing with Doctor Who is it hasn't really got canon. It's never really had canon in the sense that it's a show that reinvents itself constantly. It changes its rules to suit the showrunner or the person in charge at the time of that, whether it's John Nathan Turner, Verity Lambert, Stephen Moffat, Russell Davis or Chibnall. Now, I was a bit worried about 
it being a female doctor to start and not because I didn't want the doctor to be female because I was worried that the stories would let her down and I think the stories themselves have been quite good but some of the script writing in the stories aren't isn't that good and that's what's let her down and I feel very bad for her because I think she deserves better uh, when she first finds the TARDIS and she apologises because she's lost the key and the TARDIS door opens. It's just a very sweet moment of, you know, the TARDIS, which has always been a her, you know. It's suddenly got a woman driving it and she's probably thinking, hmm. But, yeah, I... I the way I look at it, I don't care whether the Doctor's male, female, black, white or orange or purple spots as long as the stories and the script's good and I think while some of the ideas behind the stories have been good, the actual writing's let it down. In, in some occasions there have been some very good episodes. I don't like the fact that Chibnall destroyed the Gallifreyans and the Time Lord Society after we had this whole Time War leading to the 50th Gallifrey has not been destroyed, it falls no more, only to have the Master destroy it in a rampage. I mean, how could he do that anyway? You know, how could one person destroy all the Time Lords when an army of Daleks couldn't do it and it took the Doctor in the moment to allegedly do it but didn't. So I find that very difficult. That's just the one thing that's a bit grating on it but <clears throat> I'm being nerdy again. So anyway let's carry on with this lovely lady with her beautiful hair. I'm currently reading a couple of books because I've always got more than one on the go. I've got one on my Kindle app. Well, actually, I've got about four on the go. I've got one, five on the go, actually. One on the Kindle app, which I can't remember the, the title of, but I only started it this morning. Ghost Killers or something. It sounds quite interested, interesting, something to, to read. And then... I'm listening to an audiobook book called The Deaths of Decembers, which is a crime novel. That's going all right. I tend to listen to that in bed if I can't sleep, put it on and I might fall doze off with it on or not. I think I did a bit, but I can usually pick up the story again and I can always listen to it again. And then in physical copies, I'm reading Donna Hill's uh, Rudolph Valentino, The Silent Idol Expanded Edition. Uh, which is mostly photographs, but there is a bit of text, and I'm spending a long time looking at the lovely photographs of Rudolph. Um, I'm enjoying that one. I'm also still reading, I've been reading this for a long time, and I just don't pick it up enough. Um, Judy Garland, A Life in Art and Anecdote by John Fricke. That's another good one on her. Again, it's a lot of pictures, uh, but I do like to study the pictures and read the caption, so... That's why it takes a little bit longer to read than another book. And finally, I am reading, um, is it called Who Was Jack the Ripper? It's a Jack the Ripper book. I think it's called Who Was Jack the Ripper? The Suspects Reveals. And it's by the H Division Crime Club. Oops, I've gone up so you can't see me. Um, and basically it's um, different members of uh, the Ripperology H Division Crime Club gang. And each one of them writes about a different suspect and why. Yeah, I've just coloured in a, a, a ribbon in brown. That's all right matter go over it um i'm not really with it today and um i put ruby over the top so it'll be dark at the top because there is up there anyway so yeah 
and about why their suspect is most likely to be the real suspect. So there are 12 named suspects and then there is number 13 who is unnamed. Um, so someone that nobody's ever thought about, could it be, you know, I have no idea how they profile somebody, you know, what the, not profile because you can give a profile but and got no idea what that chapter's about. So at the moment it's very interesting. Um, I am reading it every a little bit at a time. Um, I personally don't think we'll ever know who Jack the Ripper is, but it's always enjoyable to speculate and read the different theories about who he might have been from all the various theories from over the years. Um, so you've got obviously the original suspects from the day like uh, Montague John Druitt, Druitt um, David Cohen, um, Joseph Barnett, um, Charles Lechmere, Francis Tumblety and so on, Kosminski and uh, this is what it's about those. So it's always fun to read about those. It's also interesting to read about other potential ones who weren't necessarily suspects at the time. So for instance, uh, in the 90s, there was this whole big thing about James Maybrick, who was allegedly killed by his wife, although he was actually addicted to the poison that killed him. So it may well be that he just overdosed. She was convicted, but then she was released and she moved, I think, to America. Um, very sad story. Anyway, he, uh, in the 90s, a, a diary called The Diary of Jack the Ripper supposedly turned up in, I think it was Liverpool. Um, basically, a man was renovating a house where Maybrick lived. And um, under the floorboards or somewhere like that, they found a book and it was a diary and the it was purported to be that or it said it was that of James Maybrick and he was confessing in this book to being that's got to be hair because it's in front of a wing uh, Jack the Ripper so all very 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 interesting but I love, you know a lot of people say no there's no way he's Jack the Ripper because of this this and this and people say, oh yes, it was because of this. And then they analyse the paper and yes, the paper is original to the time, but it's just what would have been like used as like a photo album or an album at that time. And the first load of pages were ripped out. So it's like somebody got hold of a genuine book from the time period, ripped out what was already in there, and then just used the next lot of pages. The ink may or may not have been used at that time. There's so many different things. So in, in a, it, all in all, it, it is all very fascinating. Um, the same as a few years ago, we had the thing with the shawl, uh, which was alleged to have been taken from the crime scene by a policeman um, and that it belonged to Catherine Eddowes. Well, the shawl was too high a quality to have, for it to have belonged to Catherine Eddowes. Um, she would never have been able to afford it. Um, it's very long for a shawl, and in fact that the ripperologists dub it the table runner because it does look like a table runner. Um, and it looks more Edwardian than Victorian. So um also the policeman who said he took it from the scene wasn't even at the scene, he was from another division that wasn't even on that sort of detail at that time. So there's lots of different things that have come up through the years. Another ripperologist, I think it was Donald Rumbelow, he wrote a brilliant book, had a, a knife, a scalpel, a long knife, bladed knife, that was purported to be one of two knives used by Jack the Ripper. The other one broke. Um, so I don't know, but it, it's, I just find it so fascinating. I can't even speak. Um, absolutely fascinating. And uh, yeah, so, 
my phone's just gone off. I'm hoping it might be an eBay's day. It's gone for sale. It's gone very, very quiet. I have got to list some stuff tonight. So I'm only making a couple of quick videos. This is one of them. And then I'll be, I might make a flip through of a new book I've got. There, that's that side complete. Now we'll go back to this side and, and just do exactly the same. It's very boring. You're just listening to me ramble, aren't you, really? I don't mind. I like rambling at you. You're all good people. So yes, I subscriber count has grown again. So thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, I do appreciate your subscriptions. Thank you so much. We are now over 800. It, it, to me, that's amazing. I can remember when I first started making videos for the channel. Um, first of all, I started putting up uh, videos of just random stuff like the, my mum's dog and my dad, Paul's mum's dogs and some Marilyn bits. And then I started doing BookTube because I discovered BookTube and I am a huge reader. I do love reading. Um, so I started making those and my subscriber crown grew slowly. And then, of course, I started... Um, I obviously filmed Marilyn related videos. Uh, I still do the odd one here and there. I've got to get back to it. It's something that will happen. And then, of course, I, I started colouring. So I started doing the odd colouring video. And then I had Jennifer and reading sort of tailed off as she got older because it's, it's hard when you've got um, a child. I mean, when she was little and sleeping a lot, obviously it was easy to carry on reading and colouring and doing that because, you know, while she slept, if I wasn't sleeping, I, I read. But now, of course, if I'm not working, if she wants, you know, she's, she's obviously, she's two, she's constantly wanting attention, she's wanting my attention, and that's perfectly fine, I don't have a problem with it, I love it, I love, I love it to bits, she's, oh, she's amazing. Um, that's why I do my videos in the evenings when she's in bed. So she's up there nice and asleep. I'll check on her before I go to bed. Um, so that's just the way it is. I mean, at the moment, that's that's fine. That's how it's got to be. She's too, she needs my attention and I'm happy. I love it. So I don't get to read as much as I can. I do read when I can. So for instance, when I go to bed, I will probably listen to a little bit of my audiobook a little bit, not not a lot, but a little bit of it, just for like half an hour, because it's getting to it quite interesting now. I've got loads of audiobooks to listen to, some I downloaded years ago and I've never listened to them, because I have an Audible subscription, so I bought, I, I downloaded two more yesterday, I still got full credits, because I don't want to use them all up in case something I really, really want is released, so... Or, if, you know, because I've got so much to listen to, I don't really need to. I don't listen to them as much as I I like to. I, go, I mean, when I'm on holiday, I listen to them all the time because I listen to them again in bed or late at night or whatever. But again, it, it, I, I can't do it for very long with, with when Jennifer's awake, so... But uh, yeah, I do like listening to my audiobooks. I really enjoy them. Yeah. So. so I've got some more colouring books coming. Why is that a surprise? It's not, is it? And I've ordered the dual tip twi markers from Arteza. I could only get the 48s. I wanted the, I think it's 120, but they're out of stock. And I really wanted these markers to try in a book, to try something a bit different. You know, different. I wanted markers that weren't super tips, but that were water-based. Um, and the super tips, there's nothing wrong with them, but the tips are too thick. Oops, sorry, for a book I've got. Um, it's got some quite detailed images in it, so and it's too they're too big for fine liners and too small for super tips. So if I thought if I order the Twi Markers Dual, I might they might work, but I gotta wait for them to come. They're gonna take a little while to come, unfortunately. Um, but of course they're prioritizing more important things, and I totally get that. I mean, we ordered Jennifer some bubbles 
ages ago because she loves bubbles and the solution was down, takes so long to come, I ordered another lot of solution which came quicker but I definitely didn't cancel the other one because the amount she, she likes it. So the other one's come in in the next day or so and I ordered it a month ago so which is fine. I mean I don't mind that because I use Amazon Prime I'm a Prime member, I don't mind about the delivery because I do use the Prime video and stuff like that. So, for instance, I've got, there's a, there is a film I want to watch on there and I keep meaning to and I keep getting distracted by other things like making videos um, called Reliving Marilyn, which is on Prime. So that's something I need to do soon. Because, as you know, I love Marilyn. I love old Hollywood. So <laughs> you might have noticed that since I'm reading two old Hollywood books at one go, Judy Garland and even older Rudolph Valentino. So. so if you've never seen a Valentino film, do watch one. I, I get that it's difficult because it's black and white and it's silent and I think a lot of uh, modern people find that sort of thing hard going because it's so old fashioned but it was revolutionary at the time. In those days they didn't have makeup artists, they did their own makeup or they did each other's makeup and there, there are actually photographs of, of Rudolph Valentino on The Son of the Sheik which is the his very final film before he died um, doing the makeup of another, another of one of his co-stars. So. So, I mean, I haven't seen all of his films, but I've seen a few of them. I, I love, like The Sheik, Blood and Sand I've seen. Um, oh, I can't think of the one. Four Horsemen, obviously. Um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember. There's another one. Um, and Moran of the Lady Letty, which I absolutely love. He looks so modern in that film because his hair's not slicked back. Not, well, it's not all the way through it, but when he's, he's shanghaied on to uh, be um, a crew member on a pirate's boat and, and he's a well-to-do young man and, you know, the, the heir to a lot of money and he becomes weather-beaten and obviously all the gel and whatever they used to slick back their hair in those days has gone and it, it it just looks it just looks normal so there's no grease in his hair or anything it's just windswept and he looks so modern and so so handsome you're just like oh yes please and the other one there's a picture of him which was when he grew a goatee for a film that was never made uh, that he wanted to make and Oh my god, there's one picture you just absolutely stunning with this goatee and you could just mm, Actually, I've missed a bit there. I'm gonna have to go and uh, just there look find this green. I can't remember which green it was I'll find it Um, yeah, he looks absolutely stunning my mum, I think I've told you the story before actually always always said and I remember saying she didn't understand why women killed themselves over Valentino and I, I don't think she does because people I, I don't understand why anybody but when he died you know because he died relatively young at the age of well very young at the age of 32 and there was an outpouring of grief he was the first big Hollywood star to actually die well he wasn't actually there were ones before him but he was the first one that had this massive massive um outpouring of grief um he died in New York. Um, and so, and, and apparently several women killed themselves because he had died. And my mum never understood that. And she said, I just don't understand the fascination with him and why people, you know, adored him and why they would do this because, you know, well, because all she'd seen is just clips from like the chic. And of course, in those days, they overacted because there was no sound and the film wasn't good quality so they overdid the eyes, the big bulging eyes and to get the emotions across, you know, and it was an art acting for silent films, I, I, I think. 
obviously as picture quality and camera technology got better and the sound came in they didn't need to do this over the top acting thing that they did in the silence so she'd only ever seen like these um, googly-eyed stills of him from The Sheik because that was the most famous film that people ever used while mentioning him. And I brought a couple to copy of The Sheik and there's a gorgeous picture of him on the cover of the DVD. And I mentioned it and she said, I don't understand. She actually said, I don't understand. I said, I'll bring it bring down and have a look. Because she'd never actually seen photographs of him not doing this googly eye thing. Because although she she liked movies, she wasn't into it as much as her mum was. Um, and her grandmother had loads of silent mag uh, magazines of silent stars, which all disappeared after her nan's death, her grandmother's death. And um, I put this DVD cover down um, with this absolutely gorgeous picture of him just looking at the camera. And she looked at it and she went, oh... Oh, now I understand. <laughs> she hadn't realised how handsome a man he was because all she'd ever seen was these clips of him uh, in the silent movies of the big eyes and the, the overacting, the wide, you know, grinning loquaciously and all that stuff. She hadn't understood, she didn't know how good looking he was. And so she was like, she saw this picture on the cover of the DVD and she was like, Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. So, for her to admit that, it's not the sort of thing she'd probably want to watch. Um, but she totally gets why now people thought he was gorgeous. Because he was. He was a, a, a very, very good looking man. And it is sad that he died so young. And he, had he lived today, he probably would not have died. He would be saved. But that's just the times he lived in, sadly. Keep that one because we need to do some green bits on these flares. So it's nice when you can show somebody something and they're like, Oh, I see. And you're like, Mm hmm. Now I get it. Because I've always been one of those people, I won't judge something till I've, I've seen it or read it. I mean, people, I mean, and, and it is hard when you are a fan of somebody like Marilyn when so much horrendous stuff is put out about her and written about her and made about her. You, it is to the point you don't want to do it and you don't want to watch it anymore. But how can you have an opinion if you don't watch something or read a book? And that's the only reason I keep buying some of them. I won't buy them all because some of them are just fan made ones and they're clearly, clearly terrible. Um, but I've got a few of them because I thought some of the titles were quite funny and I thought I've got to buy them, I've got to see what this is. But there are some books that have been self-published that are like 30 quid and I won't, I won't buy them because I can tell just by looking at the, the information that it's going to be atrocious. But if it's by a respectable author or somebody like that then I'm quite happy to 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 buy it and to risk money on it um, and had the, some of these books been seven or eight pounds like some of them are yeah, I probably would have but there's just too much rubbish out there these days to be buying it all and there's so much else I want to read these days I, I'm I do collect books on Marilyn and if it's by an author I recognize or if it looks like it's you know if it's some if it's like it's 25 or 30 pages long I'm gonna think hang on a minute that's by that's self-published by somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about if it's two or three hundred pages I'm more likely to take a punt on it and and buy it as long as it's not stupidly priced if it's about 20 quid 
that's fine you know that's how much books used to be and if, it, if it's less than that even better that's all I can say obviously the cheaper the better we're about to knock off because it's hitting 30 minutes so I'm just going to carry on doing this until it stops and then I'll switch us back on and we'll continue because we've nearly finished now yes so yeah I mean there are too many books on Mara for me to uh, keep buying them all now especially as they're not that good some of them you know if it was by Michelle Morgan or Gary Vitico Rubles there's a few other authors I would obviously consider buying it because I'm like yeah that is going to be okay that is going to be an okay book that is definitely worth me buying um but sometimes you get ones and you're like yeah no not going to do it so I don't buy many books anymore there are certain authors I collect I mean I do obviously buy Marilyn and Hollywood books I do collect Jack the Ripper books it's just fascinating me I'm interested in true crime anyway but it's Jack the Ripper possibly because he was the first British serial killer um as far as we know and the you know it was, he, it's a mystery it's a big mystery even now over 100 years later it was 138 no hang on 32 years let me just think about that i got to think Hundred and thirty two years ago. I had to count then and work it out. So it was eighteen eighty eight, so hundred and thirty years ago. Thirty two years ago. And yeah. It's still unsolved. There's it's never going to be solved, I don't think. But like a lot of people, I find it fascinating. And there's so much mystery surrounding some of the, the victims as well and especially the final one, Mary Kelly, or the alleged final one, Mary Kelly, of who she was and where she came from because nobody can find records of her and was Mary Kelly her real name or was it a name she gave herself because a lot of these people did make up names. For instance, I think one of the other women that was killed, I'm not sure which one, gave the name Mary Kelly once because it was a common name. So is it a name she made up to hide her true identity because she didn't want to be found for some reason or what? Nobody knows. And the only thing we know about Mary Kelly is what her partner or lover, as they so salaciously call him, which he was, he was, they, they lived together. Um, we only know what he told us really. That's all we know. So he could be making it up. I can't say, I wasn't there. Each, in this book I'm reading, each candidate, each is given a good reason as to why this person may well be the Ripper. So from that, it's very, very interesting to, to see, you know, just wonder which ones are, are going to be. Who is the killer? Who could be the killer? It could be anybody. And it could be somebody who was never considered. And that's the interesting thing. We'll, we will never know who Jack the Ripper was because it's just too long ago. And there just wasn't, I mean, you could say, how could somebody get away with doing that? They just didn't have what we have today. They didn't have the technology. Fingerprinting itself was in its infancy. There was no forensics as such. There was no preserving the crime scene and only in Mary Kelly's case was a photograph taken of it. And believe me, unless you've got a strong stomach, you really don't want to look at it, especially the colorized versions. Because it's horrific what that, whoever that person was what he did to that woman and of course because she was destroyed 
her body was completely destroyed, her facial features were destroyed completely. There's always the doubt, well, was it Mary Jane Kelly? Was it actually her that was killed that night? It was her house, but she was known to share it with other women, other uh, prostitutes. She felt bad for them if they had nowhere to stay and she would let them stay with her and use her, her place if they had nowhere else to go. So there's always that thing that there were not only her clothes there that night, there were the clothes of another lady she was uh, let him stay there, a lady named Maria Harvey. And um, so I'm just looking for colour, that's one. She, could she, could it have been, it, obviously it wasn't Maria Harvey that night because we know Maria Harvey lived because she testified, she she discussed it. Um, I think she was called the coroner's cause. I'm not actually 100% sure, but there were other women. But it wasn't Mary Ke Kelly's clothing that was burned that night, it was Maria Harvey's. So it's possible that... It wasn't, and it's also quite possible, very likely that it was. Some people say they saw Mary Kelly after the alleged time she would have been killed in the morning um, of the day her body was discovered. Her body was going about half past 11 in the day or something like that anyway. But nobody knows. I mean, it's more than likely it was whoever Mary Kelly was in that room that day. But because her body was so disfigured, her face was, and her face was completely, completely obliterated. There's always that, there's always going to be that doubt. So now I'm going to use a bit of Wink Stella just on her, her little wings to uh, just give them a bit of shine. This is just a clear Wink Stella. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. Not too much because We don't need a lot. A little bit on this side. And we are almost done. So in the next one, I guess we'll be doing one of the Jade Summer pictures, but I haven't decided which one. We will do both of them. So if you voted for one or the other, uh, don't worry. We'll be doing both of them. So there we go. That's that done. I do like these wing castellas, they're actually really good. So let's have a look at our picture of uh, Cassandra. Let's zoom out. There she is. I'm not going to do the background, I quite like it just looking white. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this colouring chat. Not a hugely long one again. Um, I'll be back in a few days with a new one, like I said, we'll do one of the Jade Summers. But if you've enjoyed this, leave me a comment down below letting me know. Like this video because that really helps promote the channel. If you're not a subscriber, and I know around 60% of you aren't, please consider subscribing, it really does help. And if you are a subscriber, hit that notification bell um, so you get notified every time I put up a new video. That's about it, and you can share it if you want to, to your social media. I will be back uh, with a flip through probably in the next day or so, uh, probably tomorrow, and I will see you with a new video fairly soon. So. I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye guys.